Good morning class. Today we are going to do a poem written by Robin Clem. It's called Amanda. The poem goes like this. Don't bite your nails Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight Amanda. There in a languid emerald sea where the soul inhibitant is me a murmur drifting briskly. Did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, a room, Amanda? I thought I told you to clean your shoes, Amanda. I am an orphan roaming the street. Uh, I soft pattern. I pattern soft dust fit my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden and freedom is sweet. Don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda? Will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you, Amanda? I, Rapunzel, I have not a care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I'll certainly never let my bright hair, never let down my bright hair. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You're always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. This poem is written in a different way, uh, in a different style. You would notice that there are stanzas and the main stanza is followed by a stanza in a uh, bracket. So the first four lines, somebody elder in the family, apparently the parent, the mother, is talking to Amanda. And what you see in the bracket is what Amanda is thinking while she is spoken to. So the bracket lines are the thoughts that, uh, that Amanda has while her mother is giving her a set of instructions. So she, the few set, step of instructions that the mother gives in the first stanza is about not biting her nails, about not hunching and sitting and walking and uh, sitting up straight. While she has been talked about all this, she, Amanda, is lost in a world of fantasies of her own. She is. She thinks of herself to be a mermaid, drifting happily in the green white sea. She wishes to be a, a, in a place where she is the only inhabitant. She wants no company, and and therefore she wishes to be in an island, and wishes to be a mermaid. The second part of the poem, the the other set of instructions that follow. Uh, other set of questions that follow. The first one being, did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? I thought you were cleaning your shoes, Amanda. So all this the mother said, she thought Amanda has done. Apparently, Amanda has been not doing all these things, but the mother is concerned and therefore is asking. But she's asking too many questions. And while she asks these questions, Amanda only hopes that she is an orphan. Orphan re roaming in the street often making uh, making some patterns with her, with her bare feet in the soft dust. For her, so, uh, she, she thinks of freedom to be sweet, probably. She thinks she's quite um, tied up with the, with the situations and the instructions and the questioning at home. And she said, I'd rather be an orphan. She says, I am wishing for a place where it would be silence. And it says, she says, silence is golden. And for her, freedom is sweet. Then the other sets of don'ts and do's by the mother. Don'ts by the mother. Don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. Will you please look at me and when I'm speaking to you, Amanda? Again, then when while she's uh, the mother instructs, Rapunzel, uh, she thinks of herself. Amanda thinks of herself to be Rapunzel. She says, "I wish to live a tranquil life, a life of tranquility, of peace, of solitude, where none." But um, she herself live. She wants to live in a in a tower, which is in an isolated place, just as the tower, the castle in which Rapunzel lived. And she says, "I will not be like Rapunzel to throw my uh, brown, yellow bright hair down to let the prince uh, prince in." She says that she wishes to be Rapunzel, Rapunzel and live in tranquility. Now, while all this is happening. Um, 
and when all this the mother is saying Rupanzal has been thinking of something else and not looking at the mother at all when she speaks not giving an answer to the questions that the mother is asking her and therefore the mother has some other opinion and this is what she has to say stop that sulking at once Amanda you look so moody Amanda anyone would think that I nagged at you Amanda so this is what the mother thinks probably she doesn't realize the mother doesn't realize that Amanda has actually been thinking uh, of being an orphan, living a sol life of solitude, living in a life in a, uh, in a solitary place, in a solitary castle, in one of those stars in the castle. She wants no, wishes no company. And um, while she's lost in those thoughts, the mother thinks that Amanda has been sulking. So one more time, this is what the poem is about. This poem depicts the state of uh, the state of the little girl's mind who is constantly instructed about the do's, do's and the don'ts by her elders, probably the mother. She is told not to hunch her shoulders and to sit upright. She is told to finish her homework and tidy her room. She is forbidden from eating chocolates that she has. But all the time the little girl Amanda keeps dreaming of a life of freedom in the open. She dreams of mermaids in the sea of roaming barefoot in the dusty streets and of golden-haired Rapunzel who lived, in a, lived alone in a high tower. She takes no note of what is being said to her. She is then rebuked for being moody and sulking all the time. If you go back to the poem, the first literary device that catches the attention is the use of anaphora. You, if you notice the lines here, it says, did you finish your homework, Amanda? Did you tidy your room? Now, when the lines in a stanza start with the same word, like here, the word used is uh, did. In fact, it's followed by did you. And the next line that follows says, did you also? And therefore, this is a, a strong anaphora used in the poem. The second place where you see uh, see uh, a literary device is when the, the girl says uh, that she wishes to be a mermaid drifting in the emerald sea. Now that's a strong imagery. It is a visual imagery. She wishes uh, her desire to be in, a, in the green sea and to be a mermaid is an example of imagery. Alliterations can be found in the poem in, in the line where the mother says, stop that slouching, sit up straight, all the S's together form a strong, strong alliteration. The pattern throughout the poem has been A, A, B, A, C, C, C. And the mention of Rapunzel and the mention of mermaids is an example of allusion. That's all for today. Thank you, class.